Hey everyone, happy Monday. Hope you're having a great day. I had a little bit of time, so I just want to um, see if I can answer any social media questions for you, any social media marketing questions. Um, I have a few things that I'll go over, but I really want to use this time to let you guys ask me questions. It can be anything, content creation, algorithm, captions, anything social media marketing. Um, if you have any other marketing questions too, feel free to throw those in there and I will be happy to answer them. I don't see one-on-one -on -one clients anymore, so doing lives like this is pretty much the best and closest way that you'll ever be able to work one-on-one -on -one with me unless you're enrolled in my online course, Socially Empowered Estheticians. So, okay, let's get started. So I have one question already, good esthetician hashtags. I love talking about hashtags because they are super, super important. Um, however, sometimes you can get really overwhelmed and you know they're, they're, they're hard because you think that they're the answer to getting your content to all of the people that you're trying to reach. And they can be, they absolutely can be, um, but you can also overthink it and it will not help you at all. So my recommendation, and if you go back to my feed on Instagram, um, you will see a hashtag guide graphic that you can go and um, look at. It'll tell you everything that you need to do to create your hashtags. But what I recommend is number one, you're going to have 10 different hashtag sets. Each set is going to contain about five different hashtags. And you can reuse hashtags within the sets but you're going to have 10 different sets, okay? And so each of these sets is going to contain hashtags that are location hashtags, that are niche hashtags. So for example, I use this example a lot in like everything that I do. But for example, let's say you live in Phoenix and your main offer is a hydrofacial, okay? So you're going to use hashtags that combine your location and then things that people will be searching for on Instagram. So for example, hashtag Phoenix hydrofacial or hashtag Phoenix Arizona. Um, you really want to use and um, do some research on your local hashtags because those will get you seen by the local business owners, which who knows, maybe they're looking for a hydrofacial or they have you know, a sister or um, a significant other that they want to buy one from. So always use those location hashtags um, and then always use hashtags that have the words that your clients are going to be searching for on Instagram. So if I lived in Phoenix and I wanted a hydrofacial, I would absolutely just get on Instagram search bar and I would search for Phoenix hydrofacial, right? Um, so think, put yourself in your dream client's shoes and really think about the words that they're going to be using to search for whatever they're looking for on Instagram and be sure to include those in your hashtags. But again, go back to my profile and I have a graphic on this too that you can check out. What is the ideal caption length? Okay, I love captions too. Um, again, something that definitely gets overlooked. So I don't know about you, but I've seen a lot of posts, whether it's a reel, whether it's a graphic or a carousel, that's like really amazing, really well thought, um, well thought through and put together and just really captures my attention. And immediately I want to learn more because that graphic or reel was so good. So I will immediately go to the caption and so many times I get to the caption and there's nothing else there for me to learn. There's either just hashtags or like some emojis or just like one or two sentences and it really is a letdown after I saw such an amazing reel and wanted to learn more. So you always want to put just as much effort into your captions as you do your um, creative. So the reels, the um, carousels, the graphics, things of that nature. So there's a few parts to a caption. Number one, you always want to have a hook. So a hook is the very first sentence of the caption. This draws your draws the attention um, of your viewer and really captures their attention so that it makes them want to read more. So a good hook um, would be something like a shocking fact or a question, something that like really makes them want to read more. Um, so for example, let's just say uh, a good hook would be, um, oh gosh, 
you're putting me on the spot here. <laughs> uh, you could do something like um, uh, three things you do, three things you didn't know could be hurting your skin, or something, something really intriguing that that person would then read the rest of the caption. So you want your hook, you want the body of your post or the body of your caption. Now, some people make mistakes of having the body of the caption be like so long, like like just sentences smashed together. You want it easily digestible on the eyes. So if I glance at your caption, I will see the hook, I'll see the main points of your caption, and then I'll see your call to action. So um, if you have several things you wanna say in the body of the caption, try using like emojis as bullet points to make it easy digestible, easily digestible visually. Um, Try not to use more than like two sentence, two sentences together at once because it can just make it look jumbled and people just won't read it. So you'll want your, your hook, your body that's easily digestible and like bullet points. And then you want your call to action. So call to action is something that motivates your reader to take action. So if you're trying to get them to um, click the link in your bio so that they'll go to the, um, so that they'll go book, you can say something like, um, uh, glowing skin is just one tap away, click the link in my bio. Now, a lot of times people use really dry calls to action, so click the link in my bio to learn more, visit my website to learn more. Things like that are just super dry and they're not really motivating. So if you can do something like, um, you know, clear skin is meant for you, I'm just a DM away, or something like that, like really make it motivating. Speak to what your dream clients um, motivators really are. So if they really want clear skin, um, use a call to action that really speaks to that. If they want to reduce their pigmentation, speak to that in your call to action. Okay, so let's see. Your online course is amazing. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so happy that you are... Sorry, I'm trying to read and talk at the same time. Uh, let's see. Oh, here we go. Okay, your online course is amazing. Thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate that. I put a lot of work into that. Um, I saw one-on-one -on -one clients for so long and I just knew that the results that I was um, helping them achieve for their aesthetics business, everyone needed to know that. And I can only see so many clients at once and so I decided to put all of my knowledge, my experiences into an online course so that anyone can access it. So I really appreciate that. Okay, Sophie says, when did you decide to pivot into making content and products for other estheticians? Do you still take regular clients? I would love to do both, but I don't know when the right time would be. Okay, so this is something that I don't know, maybe I just don't talk enough about, but I am actually not an esthetician. I am not a licensed esthetician. I am not in the aesthetics industry at all, um, which, this comment really makes me feel good because obviously I talk about the right things and um, have a lot of knowledge so that it comes across that maybe I am an esthetician, but I'm not. And so I will take that as a compliment because you know when, so I'm a marketer. I went to school for marketing and um, I my first like marketing gig, I guess, after graduating was I was a social media manager for a social media management agency that specifically worked with skincare industry professionals and I just fell in love but I knew that like I had more knowledge outside of just social media like websites and paid ads and blogs and email marketing that I could offer to the skincare industry so I decided to go on my own and strictly do marketing for estheticians so I am NOT an esthetician at all I think like if I had another life, I totally would do that because I'm, I'm obsessed with the industry, um, hence why I do what I do. Um, but anyways, yeah, that's, that's kind of how I got into it. And so now I strictly am just all aesthetics, marketing, marketing side. Um, but so I know, Sophie, you're asking kind of, you wanna be like a mentor and maybe get into the mentorship side um, as opposed from taking one-on-one -on -one clients or doing both. Um, the right time, I don't know what the answer is for you, but one thing that I will say is online courses are absolutely incredible. So if you are an esthetician that 
has a lot of other aesthetic industry professionals that follow your page, that you interact with, things like that, and you feel like there might be a need or um, a demand for you to mentor your, um, your peers, online courses was 100% the way to go because you put all of your knowledge into um, a product, right? And you spend all of this time creating one product and then it's all there. So then when you sell it, it's all passive, right? So you spend all that time, just one time creating a product. And so then you can sell this online course that helps an unlimited amount of people for the effort of just you know one time. That's 100% the way to go if you want to, number one, help more people with your knowledge, and number two, make passive income. Who in the world doesn't want to make passive income, right? You create a course and you sell it evergreen, um, and it's just absolutely amazing. So definitely, definitely consider online courses. Um, I did take a course to learn how to create online courses, and I have um, an affiliate link with a discount for the person that I that I took that course from to learn how to do that. So if anyone is interested in those, um, just let me know and, and I'll um, send you that affiliate link. It's 100% worth it. I made my money back literally within, oh gosh, within three days of launching my course, I made my money back on the investment of the course to teach you how to create the online course. And it's just absolutely amazing because I can help unlimited people with this. All right, let's see, do we have any other questions? Yeah, yeah, I am not an esthetician, which like I said, such a huge compliment because I have done so much research and I follow you guys. I truly listen to what all of my followers are sharing and I'm learning so much. Um, and so that, that really, really makes my day that you, you thought I was an esthetician because <laughs> I really do try. I try to know, I try to know my audience um, as well as I possibly can so that I can understand what you're going through so that I can understand what you're trying to sell so that I can help you market it. Your advice is amazing. What ratio of reels to stories to posts would you recommend? Oh, I love this question because as you know, the algorithm is always changing. Okay. It is always changing there for a really long time. Reels were what is, was going to put you in front of everyone, right? Um, they're like reels, 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 do reels every day. Um, and, and it worked, right? But just recently, they didn't announce a change or anything, Instagram didn't, but I will tell you within the last two months, all of my graphics and carousels outperform my reels every single day. So what I tried doing, because I was creating a bunch of reels, so what I tried doing was I created a reel one day and then either a carousel or a graphic the next day and alternated and my audience like exploded. I kid you not, literally in October, I was at a thousand followers and now I'm almost like literally almost to 5,000 followers. And a lot of that traffic came from my graphics and my reels. And of course I have a strategy. I have um, a really unique strategy to, to myself um, that I follow. And I also teach that same strategy inside Socially Empowered Estheticians. And the strategy 100% is the way I grew my audience so fast. Um, so I would recommend doing daily stories, um, at least three stories a day. They don't have to be crazy, but just show show what your audience really wants to see. What's gonna set you out? Um, what's gonna, or sorry, what's going to set you apart from the crowd, from the other estheticians, from your competitors? It's your face, it's your personality. Um, so share that in your stories. That's a really great way to do it. Highlight your products in your stories. Um, do behind the scenes. People love watching, you know, dreamy, um, videos of you performing a facial. Um, so definitely daily stories. I would recommend like three reels a week and then the rest carousel. So maybe three reels a week, four carousels or graphics. If you can't sustain that many though, that's okay. 
Um, this is another part of creating your unique social media blueprint, which I do teach inside Socially, socially Empowered Estheticians. But it's okay if you can't sustain that much because the whole part of creating a social media marketing strategy for your aesthetics business is creating something that you can be consistent with, that you can sustain, not just for one week, but you know for years to come, okay? So if you can't sustain seven posts a week, or seven, you know, reels and carousels seven times a week, don't do it, right? Because you don't wanna post seven one week and then nothing the next, right? So um, when I teach you how to develop your strategy, um, we really look into your schedule, your human design energy type, and really figure out what that baseline number of posts is going to be that you can sustain right now. And then of course, down the road, once you get the hang of it, once you get your strategy and um, things on autopilot, you can increase from there, but figure out what your baseline is. If it's three posts a week, if it's you know four posts a week, great, just do that. And then anything else um, is just, extra is just bonus, right? If you have your four posts and then you randomly decide to create another one, great. But every single week, you need to be able to sustain that those four posts, right? So definitely mix them up. Try the reels, try the carousels, try the graphics, show your face, um, use your voice, and daily stories. How many did you have on your email list before launching your course? I feel like I'm just waiting to build more before launch. So when I first decided to create my online course, I started um, getting people on my email list before the course was even before the course was even launched. So I created a freebie or a lead magnet, something that my audience really wanted and could have in exchange for their email address. Um, and I grew my email address. I think my launch, um, I was at about 400 on my email list, 400 email subscribers, and I launched in November, and now I have a thousand people on my email um, list, and it's only been a few months. So definitely create your, um, definitely create your, gosh, I just had a brain freeze, or brain freeze, <laughs> um, create your lead magnet, and start building that email list, but honestly, launch the course as soon as you possibly can, okay? launch the course, even if it's a small launch, even if you make one sale, great, that's awesome, but then you can continue doing it. So don't wait until you have a large um, a large email list, um, just launch it, okay? <laughs> okay, I'm definitely interested, would love that link. Okay, I send me a DM and I'll send you that link. Um, both Sophie and uh, Derma Lashery definitely send those. Okay, I have a background in fitness and nutrition, so my course is how to clear your acne through a healthy diet lifestyle. I'm struggling to make a sales page that converts. Do you help with this? Okay, struggling to make a sales page. Okay, um, are you using Teachable? What what are you using? Kajabi, Teachable. Um, I can look at it for you if you want. I'm happy to I'm happy to look at it. Um, conversions are hard. Uh, you have to make sure that your copywriting is great. I don't see one-on-one -on -one clients, but I'm happy to take a peek at it if you want me to, um, and I can help that way. Okay, let's see. Any ideas for a freebie? What was yours? I'm also an OCA suit with Amy, but it's nice to have some examples from an esthetician perspective. Um, so my freebie or my lead magnet was, um, <laughs> it was actually a really crazy one. Like I have no idea. Um, it's just blows people's mind when I'm giving this away for free. And that's kind of the point of a freebie and lead magnet is to make it so juicy that like there's no way they can pass this up because it's for free, right? So mine was 100, I think I did like 130, 130 um, content things. So I had like 80 images, I had pre-made graphics, I had um, captions, I had an ultimate caption guide. Um, things that would jumpstart their um, their social media presence. And like I said, that went like wildfire. I did take that away actually. Um, the only freebie that I'm offering right now is my free masterclass that teaches you how to book local aesthetics, aesthetic, cli aesthetic clients from social media. Um, so that's the only freebie I offer. Um, 
like I said, I had that 130 free um, content downloads, but I, I did take that away and I'm just pushing my master class now because it really is such a great resource. And the other really good thing, um, not only will you learn so much in the master class, but also the cool thing is I created two months worth of, worth of plug and play social media content. So there's um, 20 carousels with captions, 10 grab, wait, no, yeah, 20 graphics with captions, um, 10 carousels with captions, 15 video scripts, um, I think there's like 15 or 20 um, story templates, and these are all like templatized so you can go into Canva and um, you know switch them to your niche and whatnot. I also have an aesthetics holiday calendar, so there's 40 aesthetic holiday um, posts and captions. So. If you watch my masterclass, you learn how to get those for free too. And I give a savings or bonus into um, my signature program, Socially Empowered Estheticians. Okay, let's talk about more social media stuff. What guys, what do you have questions on in the social media realm? I will say until I get some more questions, it is so crazy. I don't know if you saw my recent reel that I just posted today, but not only me, but also another one of my socially empowered esthetician students um, almost got scammed on Facebook, and it it like literally within the same week, my mom got um, a notification like this. Like they are trying to scam hundreds and hundreds of aesthetics um, professionals on Facebook. So one of my esthetician or one of my socially empowered esthetician students, she screenshotted it and showed it to me, and these scammers are like. I'm going to take down your Facebook page if you don't click this link and give me this information. And it, it looks legit, but if you go to the post that they tagged her in, they tagged like 50 other aesthetic pages, um, and it's just absolutely insane. Uh, Sophia, I love you, Shaylee. <laughs> Changed my business and life forever. Oh, I appreciate that so much. You're so kind. I'm so, like seriously, this, when I decided to go full full on with this business, I have met some of the most incredible human beings that I have ever come in contact with in my life. I, whether they're students of mine, whether they're just followers, I have met some of the best people doing this. So the aesthetic industry has amazing people in it. <laughs> so I appreciate that, Sophia. Um, so one thing that I have actually really been thinking about and this might be a little bit controversial because I've seen a lot of it go around in the um, skincare industry online, on social media especially, but there's this thing going around that is promoting community over competition in the skincare industry. Um, have any of you seen this, heard of this, um, are, are in this? Let me know in the comments if you have, but I'm going to give you my take on this. And I probably have a different take than a lot of you have. And I don't know, I might get, I don't know, I'm not going to say anything. But anyways, community over competition. I understand, I understand the thought process behind this, okay? I understand that as um, in, in the skincare and aesthetic industry, it can sometimes be a little... Oh, I don't even know the word to describe it, but there is that cattiness maybe. Maybe it's cattiness. I don't I don't know really the word that I want to use there. Um, but I can understand why everyone is banding together and saying, hey, we are all in the skincare industry. We can help each other, we can uplift each other, you know, we don't need to be competition. And I completely agree with that and I understand that, okay? However, from a marketing perspective, I don't want people to think about this community over competition and get it skewed, okay? So no, you know, you're not in direct competition with a lot of people and you can band together, you can, um, you know, change the world together, right? But as a business owner, competition is good and competition is healthy. So let's say you have two other estheticians in your local area that you are technically competitors, right? I want you to view them as, hey, 
I can get together with them. We can, uh, maybe our, our services complement each other and we can build a community that way, but they are also my competitor. Um, competition is really healthy in any industry, right? It pushes you to be better. It pushes you to um, give better customer service. It pushes you to, um, you know, offer more services. And, you know, you have to view your competitors as competitors. You really do. You have to always put yourself in the mind from a business standpoint, right? Um, to be able to grow your business and be successful in your business, you have to have competitors and view them as competitors so that you can find your unique selling proposition, so you can find out what sets you apart from your competitor and then market it, market your business in that way. So community over competition, I understand and I agree with to a point. Um, you definitely don't wanna be catty, you don't wanna be rude to other people, you wanna, you know, help help each other um, but you do have to have that competition and you have to view your business that way um, I agree with you Shaylee about community versus competition I disagree with a lot of estheticians in my area and I think that sets me apart absolutely perfect example right um, no you're not gonna go bash these people you're not gonna go bash your competitors you never would do that um, but you do have to figure out what sets you apart and like you said you disagree with a lot of the things that they're doing maybe or the things that you're saying and that sets you apart and you know that's good competition or that's healthy competition for them too because they're gonna see you succeed and they're gonna be like oh I gotta step up my game and then they're gonna step up their game and then you're gonna be like oh man I better you know do better too and it's just it, it elevates both of you at the same time when you view each other as competition not only does it help both of you because you're both gonna work harder but it also helps your local economy because more dollars are going to be spent whether it's with you or with your competitor and it just it literally benefits everyone how do you suggest handling this in a client facing manner I don't want to bash my competitors as you said but I like to set myself apart by talking about what I'm doing differently yes 100% it, it is a very it's a fine line um, because it, it can come off one of two ways and it, it can go one way or the other very easily too, right? So it can either come off as, um, oh, hey, she definitely is the better choice. I'm going to go with her. Or it could be like, and ew, I don't like this feeling. She's being catty or petty, you know, definitely don't want to do that. Um, so what I would recommend is whatever it is that you don't agree with those other estheticians on or if it's like a topic that they that they teach or talk about or if it's um, something about a treatment or service i'm a little sassy but i don't how much is too much well you definitely want to show your personality okay you never want you, you want to be unapologetically you no matter what that is right um if if you feel icky at all like even the slightest if you have like a hesitation um, in what you're going to post, that probably is a sign that maybe you should ask a couple different people outside of um, like your inner circle to see if it's perceived that way. So get outside input. Um, but definitely find that one topic. So if it's like a service or a treatment that you disagree with on, message your content in a way that makes your audience um, think they know what the correct thing is because they've heard it from these people, but then turn it and be like, actually, that's not correct, you know, and then tell them the correct thing. So, and this is like one of the best ways to message your content in general, like with anything that you're doing, um, but you want to pose the question or, or pose the topic to your audience that they think they know um, what the answer is, and then you spin it and say, what if, I told you that this thing is actually, you know, hurting you or hurting your skin or not providing the results. So whatever they think they're doing right, spin it and show them and educate them that what they actually think is right is actually the thing that's not getting them the results. Um, so that's one way that you can message your content in a way that stands out without bashing those other people. Um, you don't ever have to say like, oh, I don't know. Um, a lot of people in the area think, and when you say a lot of people, you're talking about those competitors. You don't ever have to like call them out on that. Um, but just 
authentically message your content in a way that you know will set you apart from what these other people are teaching or doing. Um, and like I said, if you ever, if you create a piece of content and if you ever um, feel like, ooh, maybe this will come across as yucky, um, ask, show someone else outside of your inner circle because your inner circle is always biased, of course. Show someone outside of your inner circle and don't say anything. Just say, what would you think if you saw this? And just get their first reaction. And, um, you know, that probably is is whatever it is. Um, but again, you don't want to sacrifice your personality. Um, so like I said, be authentic, un unapologetically, you be authentic. If you're sassy, show that that's totally fine. And you know, I, I can't remember the name um, of her profile, but there is a waxer somewhere. I want to say, yeah, I don't know. I don't know the name of her, um, her profile or anything, but I've seen a lot of her um, content and she does, she straight up calls them out. Um, she was walking, she was walking by her competitor store and there was like a chair outside sitting outside and it was like cold and stuff. And she's like, um, unlike these people that make you sit outside and wait in the cold, you can come to my studio and sit, you know, inside, read a little magazine, be nice and warm. And she totally did call those people out for it. And, you know, that may have worked for her. Um, it, it really depends on your audience too. You have to read your audience and, and who, um, who really is going to see that. Sometimes people have already primed their audience to, you know, them being sassy and spunky and whatnot. So if, if you've done that, great. Um, but like I said, just, just use your gut intuition. Definitely for that one. All right. Uh, let's see. Do I want to cover anything else? I don't think I have any more questions. Does anyone else have any questions? Um, otherwise, I think I'll go ahead and download this and post it to my YouTube if you are just now joining and didn't get to watch it. Um, if you ever have any other social media questions, marketing questions, definitely send me a DM, reach out. I will either do a live or do a post about something or a YouTube video or what have you. But I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining me today and uh, I'll see you later.